In this video, I wanted to show you how easy it is to use Salesforce's change data capture events to integrate directly with TIPCO Cloud integration. First of all, I'll show you how you set it up in Salesforce. And we just scroll down into integrations and change data capture. And all you need to do is move across any of the entities that you want to uh, monitor. I've already got an uh, account moved uh, across. That's, that's the one that um, I'm going to be listening for. That's all we need to do inside Salesforce directly. If I come across to TIPCO Cloud Integration, the first thing I want to do is to set up a new connection to Salesforce. That's as easy as going to create. We'll come up with a whole list of um, connectors. I'm going to look for uh, Salesforce and I'm going to use our develop connector. And I'm going to call it DW2SFDC CDC. Uh, it's going to be production. If I just click on login, it will take me through everything I need to do to log into Salesforce. That creates all the OAuth tokens and everything directly within the tool. So that is now created. And so now if I go back to apps, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a new application. You can see I've got lots of different types of applications through uh, develop um, applications, automation applications. There are others like integrations and there's a, a couple of Node.js applications running and so on. For now, I'm just going to create a new Flogo application. And I'm going to call it a DW2 um, SFDC CDC. And I'm going to create a new application. And I'm going to call it um, SFDC Listener. Click on Create. And I'm going to start that with a trigger. The trigger I'm going to use, you can see we've got lots of different triggers in here. Um, so I'll just do a search here. There we go. Here we're going to use a receive Salesforce um, message as our trigger. I'm going to use our, the um, Salesforce CDC connection that I set up. So that will do the connect everything up together. You've got different subscriber types and within Salesforce you can um, either use push topics, platform events, but I'm going to use the uh, CDC. And actually quite helpfully in the help you can see it gives you the different channel names that you can use. The one I'm going to use is indeed uh, slash data. I'll just hover over there. Slash account change event. Which is fine, you can see it all checks everything out there. Oh, I just need to choose the object, of course, and I'm going to be looking at the uh, account as well. Click on continue. And what I need to do is I need to copy the schema. So this will connect up to Salesforce, get me the schema, everything that I need, and pull that across. And this is the flow that we can create. So oh, there's one other thing I need to do here is I just need to map what comes out of the trigger I'm going to map that into the flow as well. So I'm going to map the output from the trigger to output within the flow, and that makes that data available to the rest of the application. So these are all the different activities, places we can place an activity, um, lots of different things that we can do here. Um, I'm just going to start with log, first of all. Um, it's a, uh, log level is info. And obviously a log needs a message. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use a concatenation. So just copying that across there. And for string one, I'm going to say um, received event. And string two will be, and this is, the, this is the data that we're getting out of Salesforce. So for instance, you'll see that we got the payload. So we can see everything to do with the um, account itself and within the change event header we can also see uh, things like the change type um, so that's one of the things that we need here i put that in the wrong place so we've got the change type 
and I'm going to say uh, for entity and we'll have the entity name there as well. So we should, if we see anything, we'll see that we receive an event for a particular entity and we should be able to see most of the payload as well. I can test this with uh, dummy data. Uh, for the time being though, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to uh, deploy this application because I want to actually deploy it and use it directly with Salesforce. So when I click on the push button, what that actually does is it effectively um, compiles a Golang based binary and will deploy that into uh, the Tipco Cloud inf Integration Infrastructure. And now I'm just gonna scale it up so I have one instance of this actually running. So we can see, um, you know, we've got lots of different things. We can see any monitoring. Obviously, it doesn't have anything yet because it's uh, still uh, scaling up. We can go and see the uh, logs and we can see them in real time. Uh, so we we'll see as that starts, you'll see that it gets um, started successfully. There we go. It's now up and running. And if I just go back to the apps here, we can see I've now got our application running here. So if I go back into uh, Salesforce, and I'm just gonna go over to um, the app launcher and go to call it the sales console. And I'm gonna set up a new account actually. So I'm gonna go um, here, click on new, create a new account and I'm gonna call it account nine click on save so that's all you need to do inside salesforce what we should see if i go straight over to um tipco cloud integration look at our new application and go to the logs remember we added in a log entry here and in fact there you go you can see here is our latest log entry that we received a create event for the entity account so it happened immediately. And that is literally how easy it is to use the, the CDC um, event capture API within Salesforce. I do have another application that I've got running, which you'll have noticed is called uh, DWSFDC CDC, so a very similar name. Uh, I made some extra changes to this one uh, where I'm actually, yes, I'm logging the same message, but also I'm using um, two branches where I'm updating either either updating Snowflake or inserting into Snowflake. So if I look at the transition here, we can see that we have a success with condition and the condition is um, update. So what that means is if we see the change type is an update, this is the branch that we will follow. And on this one, obviously we're looking at the same success with condition, but now we're looking for a create event. So if we see a create event, we're going to go through and do a Snowflake insert. And similar sort of thing, we've got our, our Snowflake con uh, connector. Here we're doing an insert into, I have a table called SFDC accounts. And then I'm taking the data as it comes from uh, the payload. And you can see here I've got the, the name, which comes from uh, here. And the key I've got from... I'm taking the uh, records ID and taking the first entry there. Similar sort of thing if we look at the uh, update, um, slightly different in that we're doing an update instead and just again mapping the same data as it comes through. So actually that should also have been listening to the same events that we go through. So in fact actually where we saw, if I go through here, click on more down here. You can see this is the event that came through from Salesforce. We can see here's account nine, that was the name. So that has actually been inserted. If we go further up here, we can see here that it has done an insert into Snowflake. And if I go to Snowflake, I have a window open here. These are my existing two accounts. And if I rerun that query, we should now see, there you go. We've got a new account called account nine. And we can test that again because we can make a quick change. If I just go and edit the account name, I'll just call it 9A. For simplicity's sake, click on save. 
I should be able to go back into Snowflake, click on Run, and there you go, we can see that's happened already. So the combination of Salesforce and its CDC adapter, and also the ease of use of TIPCO Cloud integration for building out real-time event listeners that's taking your, your flow of data and moving that into your data warehouse. Really simple, very, very easy to do. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you.